All right, welcome to Yin Yoga, Beginner's Mind. Let's go ahead and get started by coming down onto our backs into a reclining teepee position. So come onto the back, spread the feet out about the width of your yoga mat, and then allow your knees to gently fall in towards each other. And then place both hands on your, your belly, may even slide it down to the lower belly right beneath the navel, into that area that the Taoists call the Dantian. And just taking a moment to begin to settle, to land, and to arrive. In a few moments, we'll begin to move through a little bit of breathing together, breathing into the navel, then breathing into the ribs, and then breathing all the way up to the chest. Before we begin, go ahead and take a nice, big, thorough inhale through the nose. Draw the breath all the way down to the bottoms of the lungs. And then out the mouth, exhale, sigh it out, let it go. And then we begin, breathe into the belly, into your hands for one, two, three, four, five. Exhale out the nose for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale into the belly, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale out for five, four, Three, two, one. One more like that. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale out for five, four, three, two, one. Slide the hands up to the ribs. Now inhale into the belly and the ribs for one, two, three, four, five exhale release for five four three two one inhale one two three four five exhale five four three two one one more like that inhale one two three four five exhale out for five four three two one beautiful slide the hands up to your chest to the air of your heart wherever it feels right breathe into the belly the ribs the chest for one two three four five exhale out for five four three two one Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale out for five, four, three, two, one. One more. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, release, five, four, three, two, one. One, take a big inhale through the nose and out the mouth, exhale, let it go. Taking a moment, feel the mind settled, calm, centered, clear, and present. Beautiful, you guys. Go ahead and cactus your arms open, palms to the sky, elbows bent about 90 degrees. Draw your knees, your thighs into your belly. And then allow your knees to gently drape all the way over towards the left, coming into a double knee, reclining spinal twists. And if you like, you could even rest your left hand gently somewhere onto that outer right knee, right thigh as you allow the right shoulder blade to draw down towards the floor and you give your lower back a nice gentle release. 
So this theme of beginner's mind, whether we are a beginner to this practice or whether we are more advanced, it's about approaching these postures and our practice in a fresh new way or to approach it with a mind that encompasses humility. Socrates, known as one of the wisest and greatest teachers of all time, never wrote his teachings down. He always spoke it orally. And it wasn't until his, his student, Plato, came along that the teachings were began to be written down. Eventually, the Oracle of Delphi came along and they declared Socrates as being the wisest man in the lands. And when he was asked, why do you think that you were chosen to be the wisest among them all? He responded, the reason why I was chosen to be the wisest was because I was the only one that knew that I know nothing. In other words, there is that embodiment of humility. So allow yourself to be open and to be able to receive whatever it is that your practice has to offer you. From here, go ahead and bring the knees all the way back up to neutral as you inhale. And then same thing to the other side as you exhale, just allow those knees to gently drape all the way over to the other side. And if you like, you can take your right hand and rest it gently somewhere onto that outer right knee, right thigh. If you notice that the knees are lifted off the ground, you may slide a bolster or even a block to go underneath the knees here, just like Christy is, whatever feels comfortable. And then that block is there to help support. The left shoulder blade draws down towards the ground and you can position your head and your neck wherever it feels appropriate. So sometimes in yin, we actually will turn the head the same direction that the knees are going. So you would turn the head over to the right, or you could have your face facing straight up towards the sky or over towards the left, wherever it feels best for you and your neck.
Beautiful, you guys, from here, go ahead and bring the knees all the way back up to center, all the way back up to neutral. Grab the shins, draw the knees, draw the thighs back into the belly. And then now begin to gently rock forward and backward a few times, waking up the, the energy that runs along the spine. And then from here, go ahead and rock and roll your way all the way up to seated as we now set up for a butterfly pose. So we bring the soles of the feet together. The toes are forward, the heels are in, the knees are opened out. And then we draw those feet in towards the body. And then you can grab your ankles, your feet, you could even hook your big toes wherever it feels right. And as you allow the outer hips to roll down, take an inhale and draw and elevate and lift your chest, lift your spine up. And then on the exhale, just begin to fold and hinge all the way over and down to your own degree, whether that's one inch or one foot. Now, some of you, just like Christy over here, may notice that the head comes moderately close to the floor and so this would be a great opportunity to grab a block or even grab a couple of blocks here and you can put that underneath the forehead so that you support the weight of the head and then all these muscles in the neck can relax and soften all the muscles in the jaw and the face can release and relax and soften as well and then you just let gravity take over and you hold that pose, you hold that shape, as we now know, typically anywhere from two to about five minutes or so. Now there was a millionaire one late morning that was walking down the beach when he came across a fisherman next to a boat smoking a pipe. And he asked the fisherman what he was doing. And the fisherman said, well, I got my fish, so I'm all done for the day. And the millionaire pressed a fisherman and he said, well, why don't you go back out and fish some more? And he said, well, why would I do that? And we said, well, if you go out and you catch more fish, then you can make more money. Then you can get bigger nets and more boats and catch more fish. And then maybe one day you'll become rich like me. And the fisherman inquired, well, why would I ever want to do that? And then he said, so that you can really enjoy your life. And the fisherman said, well, what do you think I'm doing right now? So the moral of the story is that we get trapped, these cycles, we get caught on this hamster wheel of trying to get somewhere and trying to run this rat race. When the reality is, is that so often, the thing that we need the most is to just pause, to take a seat and to enjoy the fullness of where we are in this moment right here, right now. And the insanity that comes within our culture and our conditioning to work and hustle to get somewhere, when in the end, we could have had it right at the beginning. So right now, just allow your nervous system the opportunity to reset. Allow the pricelessness that comes but finding peace in this pose and in this moment.
nice and easily begin to transition up and out of the butterfly pose. And then as you come out of butterfly pose, you'll just cross one leg in front of the other and then roll over into tabletop pose, all fours position, stacking the shoulders above the wrists, setting the knees beneath the hips, spreading wide across the fingers, indexes forward. Cat and cow, so on the inhale, drop the belly, pull the heart forward. And then on the exhale, round the back, curling the chin in. And then on your own, just continue there. And if it feels right, I invite you to close the eyes. So yin is like exploring the caves deep inside of the mountain. Whereas our stronger forms of yoga or exercise like power yoga or whatnot is more like climbing the mountain. Traditionally, yin means shade and yang means light. So the more that we can dive into the shade, dive into the internal depths, and darkness and shadow, the more that we can explore what exists within that internal landscape that involves all things yin. Come back to a neutral spine and then now we'll come into deer pose. So right leg comes forward. So for deer pose, you wanna bend your front right knee about 90 degrees here. And then your left knee is also bent about 90 degrees and you'll notice your left shin is about parallel to your yoga mat. For some people, it's good to take a block and slide that underneath this right hip or you could grab a, a blanket or a towel, a bolster so that you're not leaning too far over to the right, chest faces forward. And then as you're ready, you'll begin to drape your torso out over that front right leg. You may grab your block and put that underneath the forehead here again as well. So anytime you have an opportunity to support the weight of the head, always encourage that. And moving through those three phases of the yin yoga pose. Phase one, I find my edge. And I know that research shows that it's about 30 to 40% of the stretch is the sweet spot, especially in yin that has the most benefit for the fascia and improving range of motion. So just under about halfway up in my, my capacity. And then phase two is I find stillness. Stillness goes hand in hand with yin. And if I do need to make a micro adjustment within the pose, totally fine, but that movement comes from a mindful and aware place. And then phase three, I let go and I let be, just allowing that gentle stream of time to do its thing and to have full faith or shraddha trust that the intelligence and the wisdom that is innate within me will take care of everything and all that I have to do is get out of the way of myself and simply allow
take a last few breaths there. Nice and easily begin to transition all the way back up. And as you're ready, we'll move into the same thing on the other side. So just swing your left leg in front of you, slide your right leg over to the right, taking your time to set up the alignment, to set up the pose, front left knee bent about 90 degrees option if you want to put a prop underneath that outer left hip turning and rotating that chest facing forward towards the top of your yoga mat and then as you're ready just beginning to drape that torso out over that that front leg perhaps using that block once again and the great thing about the deer pose is that it gives us that hip stretch here on this time on that left hip, putting that slow pressurized effect there. But with the back right leg and right knee bent 90 degrees should be no strain on that right knee. Sometimes in some of the other variations like sleeping swan and whatnot, could be a little too, too intense for certain body types. So this is a great alternative.
Go ahead and slowly begin to exit your way out of the deer pose. Just keeping that calmness that you've cultivated within the transition. From here, as you're ready, begin to maneuver your way back to a tabletop pose, all fours position. And then from tabletop, you'll slide your knees back behind the hips, so modified plank. Take one inhale there, and then on the exhale, lower slowly down, keeping the ribs in, so the inner elbows shave the ribs as you come all the way down onto the belly, and then Sphinx Pose. So go ahead and slide the elbows forward, elbows right underneath the shoulders, forearms parallel to each other, fingers spread wide, toes extend back. And then that subtle suggestion where we draw the skin of the forearms backward as you slide the gateway of your heart through your shoulders. So sternum pulls gently forward, creating a little bit more length, especially in the middle of the spine. And then when I'm doing a Sphinx pose in Yin Yoga, I like to allow that chin to come down a little bit again to release the neck and also to invoke that energy of humility to bow the forehead slightly down. Old Chinese proverb says that only the humble will find good fortune. So again, this theme of beginner's mind and how humility in many of the great wisdom traditions is a benevolent quality that leads to unending inner peace and joy. Another variation of Sphinx pose that some people enjoy is what we call prayer Sphinx. So if you want to try this variation where you bend the elbows and bring your hands to prayer, so hands are sticking up. And then you allow your forehead to come down towards your fingers, so your hands are kind of there to support the weight of the head. And this also invokes uh, a devotional quality, what we might call bhakti the yoga path of devotion. And then another option, especially if you feel like you want more medicine within the pose, assuming that this is what your body needs, is the seal pose, where you bring the hands down towards the upper corners of the mat, you turn the fingertips slightly out, and then you press down into your hands as you draw your chest, you draw your heart up, and you want to make sure that your shoulders aren't hiking up around your ears, so you draw the shoulders down so your neck is long. Again, chin slightly down. And then wherever you choose to be, feel free to close the eyes, bring that attention back inward inside. There was a German neuroscientist, Ernst Papel, whose research determined that for the average person, the mind is only present for about three seconds. And then outside of that, it's either going forward or backward perpetually. And there was a bunch of Harvard research that was done as well, and their, their research determined that a wondering mind often is an unhappy mind. So we now see modern day research affirming what's been espoused for hundreds, thousands of years through these yoga traditions, that the key really is presence. And yin yoga practice becomes a perfect opportunity to strengthen our ability and our capacity of presence. 
Anytime the mind wanders away, start thinking about tomorrow or yesterday, you start planning or ruminating, you come back to the task at hand, anchoring back to your breath, sensation within the pose, the things that are happening right here, right now. And then after your practice is complete and finished, you often feel like you just took a well-deserved retreat. Coming out the other side refreshed and renewed. One last inhale wherever you are. And then on the exhale, lower slowly down, allowing the elbows to flare out, placing the hands on top of each other and relaxing your forehead right on top of your hands as if your hands were a pillow. Coming into resting belly pose as you feel the echo of what you just did. And those of you that have moved through our advanced sequencing training and module might remember in yoga, the word for this is called Purina Mavada, the space in between the poses where you feel the residue of what just took place. Gently lift the head up, slide the hands back by the ribs, child's pose, press down into the hands and then allow the big toes to connect, the knees to open out broad and then feel your hips draw back towards the heels as your forehead begins to come down onto a yoga block or the floor. And a few options for the arms, you can have your arms straight out in front of you for some people that may feel a little bit restrictive in the shoulders. And so you could bend the elbows as much as you want to, to soften through that shoulder joint area. You could also bring the arms back behind you. So all of those are options. See what feels most restful and creates the space for you to soften the most.
Take a last couple of breaths. And nice and easily begin to come back up to all fours position. Crawl the knees forward about maybe halfway up your yoga mat. Cross the feet behind you. Release down onto your sit bones. And then go ahead and extend your legs straight out in front of you along your mat, along the floor, setting up for caterpillar pose. You can always place a blanket or a folded towel to go underneath the hips in this pose to help elevate the hips if that's helpful. And then as you're ready, begin to reach the arms all the way up above on the inhale. And then fold over and down until your body says, hey, that is enough. And you'll see Rachel over here just kind of getting her set up in place where she has her block on top of her shins towards her ankles, a bolster on top of the block. And this is where we really start to fuse together a little bit of yin and also restorative yoga. So you will see some crossover where we use these props to create that restorative effect. But at the same time, being in this position, she's gently stretching everything across the whole backside of the body from the heels all the way to the top of the neck. So you could do something similar. You could grab a block and We'll demonstrate this with Rachel here. You could put the block right between the legs and then she can allow the forehead to come down right onto that block. And again, you can always stack blocks if you need to raise the floor up a little bit more to meet the head. 
and about 30 to 40 percent of your stretch capacity softening into the pose so that you allow the the musculature the superficial muscles of the body to release and to relax so that then you can penetrate deeper underneath that and begin to access that deep fascial matrix putting that long slow pressure activating the fibroblasts laying down more collagen for tissue strength activating more elastin for tissue resiliency and elasticity drawing the hyaluronic acid nature's moisturizer getting all that fluid moving through there nourishing the cells helping to eliminate old cellular debris and just keeping everything nice and healthy in a deep deep way and slowly begin to transition out of the caterpillar. Perhaps feeling some tenderness in the spine, feeling it deep within the bones, the connective tissues around the bones we also stimulate. And the 
And now as you're ready, go ahead and begin to recline all the way onto your back. Once you get onto the back, keeping the left leg extended out towards straight, reach forward, grab your right shin and hug your right knee, right thigh into your belly. Extend your right arm out to the right and with your left hand on your outer right knee, go ahead and take the right knee all the way over to the left into a single leg twist. And if you want, you could put a block to go underneath that right knee, right thigh. You could also use your bolster. So we'll slide this right underneath Rachel's knee here for support. And remember, see where it feels best to position your head and your neck. Maybe you're turning your gaze over to the left, the same direction that your right knee is twisting. Something about that feeling soft in the head and the neck in a yin practice especially. This one will hold a little bit shorter than some of the others before we come into same thing on the other side and then taking a, a final rest. right knee all the way back up to neutral left knee comes in to join the right extend the right leg straight out in front of you extend the left arm out to the left and then as you're ready just taking that left knee all the way over to the right and we can see back here with Michelle as well just using this bolster which is always a very comfortable prop to use to really support the whole length of the lower part of the leg in a soft cushioning way and she can just kind of melt melt into the prop melt into the floor melt into deeper relaxation Left knee all the way back up to center. Draw the knees into the belly. 
Give both thighs a little hug. And then corpse pose. Extend the legs out. Extend the arms out. If you want to slide your bolster underneath your knees. If you want to drape a blanket over your, your midsection. If you have a an eye pillow to put over the eyes. Whatever feels right. Set yourself up for the ultimate yin pose. Just taking one last scan through the whole entire terrain of the body, a whole web of connective tissue, and noticing and observing there's not a place right now where you're holding on or gripping. Everything released and relaxed. And therefore that undercurrent of spaciousness throughout the body, throughout the mind, and throughout the heart. Last five minutes corpse pose.
Taking a deeper inhale through the nose. And a soft exhale out the mouth. <sighs> Start to move the fingertips and the toes. Reach the hands forward, grab the shins, hug the knees, the thighs, back into the belly. And then begin to transition your way all the way up to a last, final, comfortable, cross-legged, seated position where we'll seal the practice. As you get up to seat it, bring the hands to prayer in front of your chest, in front of your heart. Sitting up tall, slightly bowing the forehead down, coming back to beginner's mind. And that beautiful Serbian saying that says, be humble for you're made of the earth, but be noble for you're made of the stars. Seal the practice with three last closing ohms. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Much health, much wealth, much love to you. Namaste.